walk out this being like you. So would you help me in, in knowing how to deal with this person? Would you, when, when I see that person and they are just, they are driving me drink, as one of my kids used to say. They are driving me nuts. Give me insight into what's going on with them. Give me insight into, you know what, I wonder if the reason they act that way is because they are scared to death. We, we, when we were on that mission trip, and we saw these little kids, and these little kids would just like, doesn't matter what you say to me, I'm going to do the exact opposite. And a lot of the people who were there are like dealing with them like, man, that kid's just disobedient. Just blah, 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 blah. It's like, or could it be that they'd like to see if they can really trust you, and so they're going to push you as far as they can push you to see if you will continue to react with love, continue to react with kindness, continue to embrace them instead of doing what's been done to them over and over and over again. Maybe it's just a test, and if you have the Holy Spirit saying, look, this is just a test, and you with my help can pass this test. So here's what you do. You just be firm and you keep loving. You be firm and you keep loving. You be firm and you keep loving. And eventually that kid's going to go, well, gosh, I guess this is safe. That coworker's finally going to go, wow, I guess, I, I guess this is a safe place. Hey, I guess this guy really is who he says he is. Maybe I can trust him with my problems. Maybe I could ask him to pray for me because I need the prayer. If you ask the Holy Spirit this week, how can you walk out your faith? He's going to help you. God, I trust you to supply my needs as I seek the kingdom. So now, how are you, what are you going to do? How would that affect, how's that going to affect your plans this week? Um, I don't know. I'm just be real, I'm, you know, I don't lack for transparency usually. So uh, I'm one of those people that I check my bank accounts bank account balance a lot. Some of y'all are like, I never check mine. That's awesome. I, good for you. Um, but it's not me. So I remember we were on a trip one time, and we were, uh, we were actually in Colorado, and uh, there was like no Wi-Fi signal basically. where you're. The only way you could do anything on the internet was if you went to their office and used their thing. And that was a week where it's like, man, I just... I really need to make sure that everything's okay back at my old bank, you know, account. Because in my mind, you know, they walk into the vault and there's all this money. It's not really how it works. I understand that. But they keep walking in and they keep pulling the drawer of mine. And, you know, there's just those two little dollar bills like in uh, uh, It's a Wonderful Life. And they're not, they're not reproducing. And so, I, I, but that whole week, I got my wife to laugh. I'm done. So that whole week, I'm like... I need to, man, I need to know, it's like, no, just trust God, just, my, you can't even get on the internet, just let it go, you say you trust God, do you trust him or don't you trust him, well, I, God, I do trust you, but could you, just, you know, could you just, got back, miraculously, those two dollar bills were still floating around in that magical box at the bank, how, how, how can you walk out the fact that you say, I, man, I trust God? It may be that you turn down the opportunity to do something. That is absolutely speaking to me. It may be that you agree that, you know what? God, I can trust you. So I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is that's in your life, um, but the Holy Spirit does. And here's the good news. He wants you to succeed. He wants to help you develop and become everything that he wants you to become. He's, he's excited about that. So the last thing I'm going to say is, many people have the impression that I am working my way to heaven. I'm working my way to heaven. Today, I got I to gotta do some really good stuff to work my way into heaven. You know, we don't know where that whole... Uh, uh, the guy comes to the pearly gates and Paul is there. And I've got a bunch of those good jokes about, you know, the pearly gates. <laughs> Peter, who would I say? Paul, uh, well, maybe Paul, maybe it was Peter's day off. So, St. <laughs> Peter at the gate. Okay, look, I am not working my way to heaven. Jesus is in heaven making a place for me right now. I'm not working. I'm just waiting to get there to see what he's already got together. 
I am working here from the platform of I've already got a place to stay when I get there. Oh, I got to work here, work here, work here, so I'll have a place to stay up there. No, you have a place up there where you're going to stay for eternity that's been designed by the master designer, the creator of all creation, the person who knows you better. Than, look, everybody, I don't know what your favorite color is, but Jesus does. And for some of you, it changes all the time. He's been in your room five times this week, changing the color of your mansion. We're not working to earn that. We're working from the fact that that's already been earned from us. That's the reason that we can relax and we can live out this Christ-like life. Is it going to take effort? Well, absolutely. Are there going to be some difficult things? I guarantee there's going to be difficult things because Jesus guaranteed there's going to be difficult things. But it's possible. It's going to happen. This morning, how I want us to end, uh, I'm, I'm just going to pray. And um, if you have a prayer need, several of us are going to be right over here under the cross. And you just come over there if, if, uh, if you want to just need prayer or whatever. I'm serious about this. God wants to meet your needs. He can meet your needs. I believe he will meet your needs. Trust him. Take a risk. We, uh, I'm, I know Sarah didn't, didn't share this, but there, uh, we have a big, big doctor's appointment this week with, uh, with Oaks, right? Next Monday. Next Monday, a week from tomorrow. It's a big, it's a big deal. And we need, I'm asking as grandpa, I'm asking church pray with us for God to continue to show up the way he's been showing up in, in Oaks and in his healing and, and all that other stuff. Be with Sarah, be with Kenan, uh, be with Oaks during this time. Some of you have a similar need. So um, I tell you what, here's what we're going to do. Let somebody stand up. Just close your eyes just for a minute. I'm just going to ask you to boldly call out, not necessarily, you're not calling this out so that everybody in the room can hear it, but I'm hoping everybody in the room is listening and the Holy Spirit will connect uh, your need with, uh, with something that they have already been, uh, an impression they've already gotten or some way the Holy Spirit's already been speaking to them so that they might be able to pray more accurately or give you a word of encouragement. So, Father God, we are coming to you right now. Holy Spirit, you're in this place. You, you dwell in us, and, and, uh, and Father God, you say where two or more of us are gathered, that you're there. And, and Jesus, you have sent a God with us, Emmanuel. You, you, you are interceding for us even now. So, so, Holy Spirit, I just pray right now as we speak out the needs that we have or the needs that we are aware of, we want to do this as an offering to you. Here's what we need, and here's what we believe. We believe that you are a God who supplies all our needs. We believe that you are a God who brings healing. We believe that you are a God who brings redemption. We believe that you are a God who can repair what's been broken, can restore what's been lost. So church, if you've got something and you want to call it out, I just pray that you would call it out right now. And just begin to pray for what you might hear or what already is going on in your own heart or in your own mind. And pray however you want to pray.
God, I pray that you would heal Sally's voice. Glorify yourself by returning her ability to speak loud and bold and strong and to sing her praise to you. So Holy Spirit, I just thank you. And I, and I, I, I do believe that there are many here today who have needs and they're bringing them to you. And I ask Holy Spirit that you would meet those needs. I ask Jesus that you would intercede for those prayers. I ask Father God that you would pour out your blessings as never before. For every need in this room right now. God, meet it. Glorify yourself by meeting our needs. We love you. We trust you. You're good. Your mercy is, in, is renewed every morning. We thank you. Now, God, I ask that as we go today that you would speak to us uh, each, each hour of every day um, in every situation. Holy Spirit, that we would become more and more aware of your still small voice uh, when you tell us to go left uh, because you know what's on our right is not something we need or, or you tell us to go to our right because there's something on the right that we need to do or be with or, or experience or God, you tell us to, to uh, not worry about something or you tell us to, to pu push into prayer. God, whatever those things are, Holy Spirit, we want to get to where we recognize your voice clearly, quickly, distinctly, and that, that we know who you are and we know that you're talking to us. And, um, and God, I just, uh, I thank you for your goodness. You are so good to us. Thank you. Thank you for being a good father. Bless us this morning as we go. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You are dismissed. <laughs>